Lord is not some character from a fairy tale or other work of fiction. It is a historical fact that Jesus walked on this planet. Deny that is to deny a fact. Now what many people deny is that He is God. People of non-Christian beliefs will say that He's a prophet or a teacher. They do, not, they do not deny that He lived. They deny that He is God. Thus, we can't avoid the question of who we think Jesus is by saying He never lived. We need to answer the question because it is a historical fact that He walked on this planet. As many of you know, C.S. Lewis famously wrote with only three conclusions can come to regarding Jesus. Liar, lunatic, or Lord. Lord or Messiah. If he's a liar, then all his miracles were hoaxes. Then the apostles continued the hoax by declaring him to be alive, and then for some other reason that watch defies, they were willing to die for that hoax. Liar seems to be out of the question because it defies logic. Why would you die for something you know that's a lie? Believing that our Lord is a lunatic is difficult. Once again, how to explain the miracles? Does a Sermon on the Mount sound like it's coming from the mouth of a lunatic? If he was a lunatic, that was discovered during his three years of active ministry. But if we had very few followers and if he had any followers, would they die for a lunatic? Doubt it. Did Jesus think he was the Messiah? That is a question that needs to be addressed. Who did Jesus think he was? Remember when he healed the paralytic who was lowered down to the to him through the roof? Jesus told the paralytic, your sins are forgiven. Wait a minute. That was the first time Jesus met him. That means the paralytic never did anything to Jesus. So why does Jesus, Jesus say your sins are forgiven if he never did anything to Jesus? According to Jewish teaching, only God can forgive sins. And the people who were lepers, lame, blind, etc. were that way because God was punishing them for their sins. If they got well, then that was proof that God forgave their sins. To prove that his sins are forgiven, Jesus has the man get up and walk. They believe that he was paralyzed because of his sins. He is healed and walks, so his sins must be forgiven. If only God could forgive sins, then Jesus must be God. And in fact, he's just proven. In chapter 8 of the Gospel of John, our Lord is in a heated discussion with some of the Jewish leaders. At one point they ask him if he is greater than our father Abraham who died and the prophets who died. Who do you claim to be? Jesus gives an astonishing reply. He said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. First of all, our Lord's claim to be older than Abraham, who lived about 1800 years before Jesus. Second, Jesus, Jesus claimed the name of God. Remember Moses was at the burning bush, he asked for God's name. That's my name is I 
am. The, Jew, the Jews clearly understand what Jesus is saying because they pick up stones to kill him for blasphemy, for claiming to be God. It is clear. Our Lord is going to be holding the Abraham and claiming the divine name, I am. Jesus must think he is God. I assume that since you are here today, you also believe that Jesus is God. Believing that Jesus is God means that we do our best to live as He taught. That means we must be reading the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John so that we know how God wants us to live. If we believe that Jesus is God, then that belief needs to mold us and shape us by living what He taught. We all know people who believe that Jesus is God, but live, but live as if they don't care. That belief has no impact on how they live. It is as if they don't care that sin is such a terrible thing that Jesus died for our sins. It is as if they don't care that the best advice and the best teachings, teachings ever given to humanity are found in the teachings of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Gospels. By the way we live, speak clearly that we believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Amen. Successor of Peter, that he always be open to the guidance of the Holy Spirit and serve God's holy church with love and courage. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace of heart and peace of mind, for all those around the world who are anxious and fearful, for good health for all health care workers, 
that our efforts to combat the coronavirus will be successful and that the sufferings we offer up will bring about an end to the pandemic and the conversion of sinners. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For all those who do not believe that Jesus is the Messiah, that they may come to know him and serve him, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all of us gathered here, that we may honor God with our lives and our words, we pray to the Lord. Lord. But trusting in Christ's words to Peter, all those called to follow the Lord as priests, deacons, and in the consecrated life, who recognize the gift of their call and follow him faithfully, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For those in our country's service, that they be remembered with respect and gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all the sick of our parish, especially in the Stilson, Barbara Johnson, Sandy Smith, Jackie Moncrief, for those names listed in our book of petitions, and for all those around the world who have contracted the coronavirus, that they may be healed in body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all the deceased, especially Keith Colerick, Richard Johns, Norm Torkelson, Eddie Mefford, Juan Zavalza, Alea Osagunda, Deborah Roscoff, Nellie McKim, for those whose names are listed in our book of petitions, and for those who have died as a result of the coronavirus, that they may be with their Savior in paradise. We pray to the Lord. O God, who whom all things exist, we ask you to hear these prayers and the grace you grant them according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our Mass is offered for the deceased, Kateri Angelina Wayne.
pray, my friends, that my sacrifice was accepted with God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so of all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, 
we may be guaranteed one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Thomas, our Bishop, his assistant bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to a light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form of divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope of the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And grace you grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. The last was called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul. Prayer for spiritual communion for those who are attending Mass at home. I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. 
I love you above all things as I receive into my soul. So can I at this moment receive you sacramentally? Come and spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you're already there. You not myself holy to you. Never for me to separate from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and grace you perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you, through Christ our Lord. There's an update in the bulletin, but that update is about four or five days old. I have to go to the bulletin. The bulletin gets submitted by Wednesday 9 a.m. So things have changed since then. So I did sign the paperwork to refinance the loan. It's a 30-year mortgage. We want to pay it off before that. 15, 20 years. We want to pay more than the actual monthly mortgage. So um, thank you for your generosity. And with the continued generosity, we can pay this off in hopefully 15 to 20 years. Um, and then, actually, I don't have the virus. Thanks be to God. Um, <laughs> sounds were in panels arrive on Wednesday, according to the schedule. So the schedule is to start installing on Wednesday, hopefully done by Saturday of next week, so hopefully next weekend. It may sound better in here. If all goes according to schedule, but with construction, anything can happen. You know that. Um, and then electronic bell should be installed, hopefully, by next Thursday or Friday. The truck equipment is here. The actual physical bells, the decorative bells, were supposed to come on Friday. Not here. Not sure where they are. They're supposed to be here Friday. So hopefully they show up sometime this week so they get to the guy wants to stall them on Thursday and Friday. So hopefully next week we have better sound and we have sounds of bells on the hour. Okay. Um, there was something else, but I forget. Prayer St. Michael. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.